Hi guys, I'm Yusuke, a karate coach in Japan, and thank you so much for checking out today's video. Yeah, today I'm using this microphone to talk about my overall impression about my past few episodes at Hokama Sensei's Dojo, which they do Goju Ryu. So, let's start with the first component, which is about Hokama Sensei. So, if someone would ask me how would I express Hokama Sensei, I would answer Karate Professor. He knows not only Goju Ryu, but also a lot of the Shurite styles, which is something that Shotokan derives from. That's related to his background of doing Shurite when he was younger. So for instance, when we were doing the Kihon exercises, he also um, was trying to approach the movement from a Shurite um, context, which is something that I'm more familiar with. So he gave one example about Naihanchi or Tekishodan where you scoop up the leg. So that helped me a lot to understand what the movements were. I think he also is a professor um, at a university and he also does um, a lot of, of tour guides of the, you know, explaining the history of Okinawa. So when you go visit Okinawa, I think, you know, you can either go to him as a karate teacher or as a history teacher to learn about the overall history of Okinawa. And it's actually amazing as a Japanese person to widen their perspective outside of their style. In Japan, it's commonly um, said that you should only stick to one style. And people do that for, let's say, they do Shotokan for all their lives. However, there are both merits and demerits of practicing only one style. For instance, if you do Shotokan for a very long time, you're going to be very good at reaching a longer distance compared to other styles with shorter stances. So you're going to be able to excel at that certain area. However, the demerit is that you're not going to know what your style cannot do. And also, you're not going to know what your style is good at. Uh, for instance, if you do only Shotokan, you're not going to know the possibility of these round blocks that Goju has. The second component about Kokama Sensei is his emotion part. A lot of Japanese people have this mindset to just keep their emotion to themselves. However, Hokama Sensei was a little bit more outwards and he was very, I guess, um, expressional um, to his opinion. For instance, when he thinks the technique is good, he'll say, very good. But when he doesn't like it, he says, no, 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 fix it right away. So he was very straightforward and a lot more like a Westerner. Um, I mean, personally, I can both adopt to his way of communicating and the Japanese way. So I had no problem. But maybe for some of you, that might have a different, you know, cultural background, you, you'll have to adjust that, you know, accordingly. The third component is something, the only thing that I didn't really enjoy, to be honest, about this whole experience, um, is that um, he would laugh at me when I was making a mistake, a big, a big mistake. Um, I think it was that time when we were doing, um, during Kihon, we were doing the throwing technique, like, it was very similar to Aikido. I've never done such a thing, so I had no idea where to place my legs, how to rotate my hand and all that. So I, I'm pretty sure I was making a very stupid mistake for someone that knows the technique. However, um, yeah, so he was, he was looking at my movements and he started correcting me while laughing. <laughs> Maybe I was, you know, he was wearing a mask, so I saw it differently. But I'm pretty sure, yeah, he had that attitude of, yeah, making fun of the person who's trying hard. Um, yeah, what do you guys think about it? Um, you're trying hard and the teacher kind of laughs at you. Do you think that's exceptional? I mean, do you think do you think that's acceptable in your society? Personally, I did not like it at all. So let me know what you guys think. Um, about Goju Ryu, um, I had two um, very important learnings from this uh, style. The first one is the cross concept. What I mean is in Shotokan, when you punch with the right, you step in with the right. When you block with the left, you block and step in with the left. However, in Goju Ryu, there was a scene where you block up with the left and you land with the right leg. So now you're, you know, you're not moving the same side together. When you move the same side together, you can use this technique of sliding your right side from the left side like this. However, once you're crossing it, you can't use that. So what you have to do instead is that with through your back, you have to make an X. You have to support your movements with an X. I'm sure it's a little bit confusing just by words. So if you don't understand it, please comment down below so I can make a video about it. This is a pretty important concept in order to stabilize um, your movements. The second point was about the use of the lat muscles, um, the muscle right here. 
Um, this muscle, of course, um, we practice it during Shotokan as well, during punches, blocks. This is a very important muscle for you to get your um, fist connected through the back and then to the lower body. However, I believe in Gojiru, it was a lot more emphasized, especially in the practice of Sanjin, where you go like this and they slap that muscle right on it. So yes, that kind of thinking or that kind of practice, we don't have it in um, Shotokan. So I came back to the Tokyo area and I've been practicing it since then and it has been helping me a lot. So yeah, that was my overall impression about Gojiru and the experience at Hokama Sensei. Let me know what you thought about it. Um, if you've been to Japan and practiced in Japan or Okinawa, or if you know somebody who's Japanese, Japanese friend, um, how do they teach you? Is that a little bit different? Or is their communication different from your country? Let me know in the comment section below. And like I mentioned before, I will be holding a free Zoom lesson at the end of this month. I believe it was May 30th, I think, on a Sunday. So be sure you check it out and sign up from the video right here. It's gonna be. It's not gonna be recorded. It's gonna be something live, so you can ask me a question right there. Um, yeah, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel for upcoming videos. Next, after a short break of a few episodes, I'm gonna be moving back to Yusuke in Okinawa during the last part, which is Uechiryu. So please look forward to that, and I'll see you guys in the next episode. Oh, don't forget to um, check out my group lesson as well. See you guys next time.